Today on the warm up, it's an action packed show. First up, we're going to take a look back at Fan Week here at the US Open. We're also going to recap the buzz of the tennis this summer and preview day one's big matches. All of that and more coming up on the warm up. Hey everyone, welcome to the warm up. We're so excited to have you. Two weeks of the best tennis tournament in the world, the US Open. I'm Nick McCarville, I'm back for my third year, but I am so pleased we've got Olympic gold medalist, Monica Puig, joining us this year. All right, from the Olympic podium to here with us at the warm-up, welcome, and you've officially stepped away from pro tennis, is that right? Stepped away, but stepping into this new role as a broadcaster, what a better way to start off the US Open than every morning with you. Every morning, we've got our coffee, we're ready for you, and also we had an incredible last week here. It was fan week, check it out. This week saw the return of U.S. Open Fan Week, and it was bigger than ever with more tennis stars, more excitement, and more access. On Tuesday, the U.S. Open kicked things off with an exhibition of legends as tennis greats Andy Roddick, James Blake, Kim Clijsters, and Bethany Maddox-Sands took to the courts. I feel bad. I couldn't quite match the outfit. She didn't get me those, uh, you know, the tights in time. Otherwise, I would I would have worn those. They were ordered, so he just, it was the wrong size. So next next time. On Wednesday, Ralphie Nadal, Iga Svantec, and Coco Gauff led a star-studded exhibition at the Open in support of Tennis Plays for Peace. $1.2 million was raised to benefit Ukraine. You can change the world with your racket, so being here today on Armstrong and playing for such an amazing cause is something that I won't take for granted, and I'm grateful to do it amongst legends of the sport. On Friday, DNCE's House Rocking Beats heralded the return of the Chase Soucheck to the USTA Billie Jean King National Tennis Center for the first time in three years. Performing for a New York crowd is always very exciting, especially a week like this where we are celebrating tennis, the fans. And the week wouldn't have been complete without Arthur Ashe Kids Day, a staple of US Open Fan Week, which honors Arthur Ashe's legacy of instilling the values of humanitarianism, leadership and academic excellence and helps promote the sport of tennis to young people. This year, featured performers were Dude Perfect, the global sports comedy phenomenon. It's US Open time, baby. Let's get it. Let me tell them about fan week. I'ma show them what we all about. Tuesday got the legends out. Clap your hands, low Andy Roddick, low Maddox Sands. Y'all know the bread. Play for keeps. Wednesday, we gon' play for peace. And that's true, man. See the proceeds go to Ukraine. Man, the US Open finna do things. What's next? Thursday, got celebrity chefs. They the best of the best. Looking over your belly. No need for a deli. Get a garnish from a garnet shelly. Oof, bet. You don't really think you down yet? Well, on Friday, you don't gotta chase for a sound check, man. Joe Jonas got the town set. And part of me if I'm moving fast, Saturday we got all the ass. Kids day, it's really time we let the kids play and that's so worth it. I'll talk a lot, let the move surface, like quiet down, let the dude work it. I'm quick watch, no trick shots, but the crowd looking like dude, perfect. All right, we are confident that there has been nothing like that in tennis before. Thorb the rapper, what's up? I wanted to try and do our own at the end of these two weeks. That's going to be a tough act I'm, to follow. Yeah, I'm nervous. We're going to have to train for that, maybe get some training done with Thorb. Speaking of training, today it's the eve of the U.S. Open. Walk us through how are the players are feeling, how are those butterflies, what are they doing to get ready for the final Grand Slam of the year? This was personally my favorite day as a player. It's short, sweet, to the point, get your practice in and get out. Players are probably feeling a little bit nervous. I am too. I mm. mean, this is just... 
the US Open gives you so many goosebumps. Yeah, yeah, you can feel the goosebumps. We're getting ready. Also, we were talking about, we were looking at the fan week this last week, but let's talk about the qualifiers. Two Chinese men, that's the first time we've seen Chinese men qualify into the US Open, but 32 players overall, their dreams coming true into qualies. And one of them being Tracy Austin's son. That, that was, was awesome. a really, yes. really cool story. And well, just so many people here so early, it just sets the tone for what the rest of the two weeks are gonna look like. Yeah, we're very excited for it for the US Open. Let's check in now with our kid caster, Marco, who's got today's forecast. This is Net Generation Kid Caster Marco with your Sunday weather forecast for the US Open. Today we can expect the high and the low 80s under partly cloudy sky. Today's a great day to be all your favorite tennis players and maybe get some autographs and just put it the US Open. That's your US Open weather forecast. Back to you, Nick and Monica. Marco, amazing. Thank you for that. Daily forecast. I love it. I mean, it's perfect conditions. Hot and humid, which is exactly what we like this time of year at the US Open. Yeah, I think the players will expect that. And also, we've had an incredible summer of tennis. Let's go ahead and check out the storylines shaping into this year's US Open. Since 2004, the world's best players on the WTA and ATP have come together for the North American hardcourt season on the road to Flushing Meadows and the U.S. Open. Eight tournaments across North America that began in July and ran right up to the year's final Grand Slam. American Maxime Cressy kicked things off in early July by taking the title at the Infosys Hall of Fame in Newport. Seven more tournaments were to follow as the series made stops in Atlanta, San Jose, Washington, D.C., Cincinnati, North Carolina, and Cleveland. Summer highlights included Alex De Minaur winning his second Atlanta Open title. Nick Kyrgios became the first champion in the City Open's rich 53-year history to sweep the men's singles and doubles title in the same week. And the emergence of 19-year-old Ben Shelton with impressive performances throughout the summer, including being the youngest American man to beat a top five opponent since Andy Roddick in 2001. On the ladies' side, Daria Kazetkina won the Mubadala Silicon Valley Classic, and Frenchwoman Caroline Garcia became the first player to earn her way into the main draw through the qualifying event and win the title at the Western and Southern Open in Cincinnati. But the big news of the summer was Serena Williams announcing her likely retirement. The 23-time Grand Slam singles champion has indicated a desire to step away from tennis after the U.S. Open. All right, it's been a huge summer of tennis. We have to start with the biggest story, though. Serena Williams saying she's going to walk away from the sport. We're going to have a really special night inside Arthur Ashe Stadium tomorrow night. And maybe, Monica, she could have a magical final run. I mean, that's what everybody's hoping for, right? It would be like the swan song for her to win the U.S. Open. She's going to have a very tough ask of it, though. But honestly, you know. Who doesn't love Serena? No, it's going to be amazing to see Serena first up against Danka Kovanec. The other storylines coming in, it's kind of a toss-up. People are saying this is the most open, open ever. You've got Medvedev and Raducanu, your defending champions, but also players like Rafa. We talk about Serena. Sviantek there is the world number one. What are you watching out for? Honestly, I would really like to see my dark horses come through, and that's Carolyn Garcia winning in Cincinnati, Kazakina winning last week, having made the semifinals of Roland Garros, and obviously Nick Kyrgios. We have to talk about him because he is coming off of some pretty amazing form. I'm glad you said Kyrgios because I think now he has transitioned from being kind of one of those guys that everyone wanted to see. Wimbledon finalist, can he make a deep run here? That's the question mark, especially when he's coming and saying that he's feeling a little bit tired physically and mentally. He doesn't know if he's willing to put in the extra hours to get to these parts of the tournaments after seeing what he did in Wimbledon. That's going to be the biggest question mark for me and for Kyrgios. But he's honestly like one of the most exciting people to watch. Yeah, he really is exciting first round also against Thanasi Kokonakis. We're excited that Rafael Nadal is back. He's won three slams since he was here in 2019. Everyone's excited for Rafa. I think he's got a pretty good chance, but everybody, not just the players, has been putting in the hard work. We have the ball crew here at the U.S. Open and how difficult it is to actually be part of this ball crew. Nick McCarville actually gave it a go, and I'm really excited to see just what happens. Let's do it.
It is the dream of every tennis fan to be on court here at the US Open. Today, I'm gonna give it my very best trying out for the US Open ball crew. 350 members are picked. It's about rolling, throwing, speed, communication with your team and with the players. Tryouts are today. Guys, I'm giving it my best. Let's go do it. I always say it's the best seat in the house. If you're a huge tennis fan, I would definitely recommend looking into it. We're looking for a whole bunch of things. It's hand-eye coordination, some agility, concentration as well, because obviously it's a different environment from the tryout to when you get to the US Open. This next week or so, we'll look to see what the evaluators have said and we'll select. I actually am a little bit nervous, to be honest. I am, <laughs> for sure. 34 US Opens, is that yeah. right? Yeah, it's amazing. <laughs> yeah, I, I, I'm a surprised myself. I mean, I think it's sort of, throughout the years, it's become like a family, and I look forward to it every year. Time to test my speed and my knees, which are both questionable. How did I do today? So as like I was saying, yeah. fast is relative, yeah. right? I would say better than, mm. than most. I'll take it. That's why, you know, as I was asking you before, I was like, wait, if you make it, are you gonna work, right? Cause, cause, <laughs> Let's do it. Absolutely. <laughs> All right, done with tryouts. Uh, I'm not exactly sure how it went. I gave it my best. There was some nervous energy in here, myself included, actually. Encore, it's more intense than you expect it to be. I'm hoping to get one of those 350 invites to the US Open. Let's see how it goes. Okay, I have to say, only respect for the ball crew. That was really hard. <laughs> I think it's really hard, just how they're able to keep everything in line. It's just so disciplined, so yes. by the book, yes. and that's why they're the best. Yeah, they certainly are the best. I, I'm definitely not going to be on court with them. Let's talk more <laughs> about those on court stories, though. Talking about Rafa, talking about Serena, but five men have the chance to be world number one at the end of this tournament. What about for Medvedev coming back, trying to defend this title? Honestly, I saw him in Los Cabos. I was there covering that event and just looking at how comfortable he looked mm. on court. He looked in great form. He didn't get to play at Wimbledon, but he feels good on these courts. Defending champion, you know, I don't think he's going to be feeling those nerves. To me, he looks pretty solid. He was so good in that final last year. Sviantek, that 37-match win streak, we hadn't seen something like that in over 20 years in women's tennis. Where is she with her form? Because that early exit at Wimbledon against Elise, Cornet didn't necessarily maybe have the summer coming in that she wanted to have. Where it really matters is where everybody wants to peak is here at the Grand Slam. So I yeah. don't think she's going to worry too much about those results. She always plays well in the Grand Slams, in the big moments. And that's why she's number one in the world by a long margin. You mentioned Garcia as your dark horse, but Borna Choric and a couple other. I mean, there's so many opportunities for so many quote unquote dark horse players. It's a lot of feel-good stories coming in here to US Open, and I'm really excited to see who comes through. But we have to talk a little bit about these defending champs. Yeah, okay, but you mentioned Garcia a couple minutes ago. So many dark horses, big opportunity at the last slam of the year. Well, if there's one thing that's for sure is that the US Open is the place to have these types of upsets and surprises. And if anything, we have a defending champ who did just that last year. That's right, Emma Raducanu, 10 matches through qualifying last year, and Daniil Medvedev. Let's take a look at their 2021 championship runs. All right, we're nearing the finish of our first episode of the warm-up. We're going to be with you every day of the week. But favorite thing about the U.S. Open? If there's one thing I know for sure, it's that the fans come to play. <laughs> and if it's anything like we've seen there during these qualifying weeks, it's going to be double that. Yeah, it certainly is. It's been so fun to hang out with you on episode one. We are two weeks. We're with you every morning here on the warm-up. Can't wait to see you tomorrow for the very start of the U.S. Open.
Today on the warm up, it's an action packed show. First up, we're going to take a look back at Fan Week here at the US Open. We're also going to recap the buzz 